Welcome back to Milwaukee. As you can see, winter has finally arrived. Normally my channel is about the different neighborhoods here in Milwaukee and I'm talking about how to buy and sell real estate here in town. But today I want to talk a topic that I have not covered so far and that is the rental market. About 45% of the population here in Milwaukee are renting their house or their apartment and that's what I want to talk about today. We're going to take a look at the current state of the rental market which quite frankly is very heated. We have a housing shortage here and we're going to take a look at the different options that the Milwaukee market offers for renters and how much you should be budgeting for those. And finally, I want to go over some considerations if it is better for you to buy a property or when it actually makes more sense to rent. And if you're moving here from out of town and you're wondering how to bridge that gap, I'm going to have a few tips for you as well. So it's a big topic and it's cold here. Let's get started. The Vogue magazine has called Milwaukee the coolest and most underrated city in the Midwest. Friendly people, the relatively low cost of living combined with the ability to work remotely, Milwaukee is becoming an attractive option. Renting an apartment is the obvious first idea, so let's take a closer look at the Milwaukee rental market. First question, how much should you budget for rent? It depends of course on size and location. The average rent in 2022 for a studio apartment is $1,172 and a two bedroom apartment will cost you about $1,632 on average. Of course, rent prices will vary with the quality of the neighborhood. When we break down the market, there are two large segments, each of them about one third of the total market. One is the affordable housing segment under $1,000 and the other one is the luxury segment over $2,000. The two middle segments from $1,000 to $1,500 and from $1,500 to $2,000 are smaller, but they often provide a really good value and they are therefore very high in demand. Next question, what types of properties can you rent in Milwaukee? We have three different categories you can choose from depending on your lifestyle. The first category is of course apartment buildings and they come in many different flavors from older to brand new and from affordable to luxury. Milwaukee has a lot of older brick apartment buildings from the 1960s in the more affordable parts of town. They usually come with street parking and they may not be as updated that much, but they're usually an easy and very affordable solution. One step up in price, you can also find original 1920s apartment buildings in the nicer parts of town, mostly in neighborhoods close to the lakeshore, for example, in the area between Shorewood and all the way down to the Lower East Side. Rents will be a little bit higher, but they are also often updated and very nice. If you're looking for a modern building with contemporary style and lots of cool amenities, like a lounge area, an on-site gym, or a pool for residents, there are many newer and very nice apartment buildings all across town, but as you may have expected, they also come with a higher price tag. The next category are of course the iconic Milwaukee duplexes. We have a huge amount of duplexes all over the city, about 66,000 of them, and I have made a whole video series about the different types and also about house hacking. You can find the videos on my channel. Just let me say this here, we have old style duplexes, they are from the 1920s, which come with a ton of charm and curb appeal and we have the newer style duplexes from the 1960s which look like shoeboxes but they have a more modern feel and layout. Most of them come in an upper lower configuration which means that you might hear the neighbors above you walking around. There are also a few side by side, not very many. They offer a higher level of privacy and because of that they are priced a little bit higher. Because we have duplexes in neighborhoods ranging all the way from rough to excellent, prices range accordingly from very affordable to relatively high, depending on location and on updates. The third category to rent in Milwaukee are single family homes. If you want your own private backyard to barbecue, your own garage for your toys and a full basement for storage, then renting a single family house is your best option. Just like the other two categories, you can find a wide range of price points. 
rents can range anywhere from $1,200 to $3,000 and even $5,000 and more depending on size and location. A good rule of thumb is that a house will often rent for about 1% of its value. So a house for $200,000 may rent for about $2,000 a month. Just be aware that conditions can vary greatly and some of the homes for rent could really benefit from some updates. When you're comparing renting versus buying, a big and very common mistake people make is they're comparing a $200,000 rental home with a $400,000 property for sale and they conclude it is cheaper to rent. So when you're comparing, make sure you're not comparing apples with oranges. For a fair cost comparison, you want to make sure that the market value of the home you're considering is about the same as well as the size in square foot the number of bedrooms, the neighborhood, and of course, the condition. Before I get specifically into some tips for relocating to Milwaukee, let's talk about renting versus buying in general. For most people, there are two parts to this. There are personal and lifestyle considerations, and there are financial considerations. Renting has the big advantage to keep you flexible, and generally you will pay a premium for that flexibility, because after all, it's a for-profit business. If you're expecting to move again after one year or two at the most, renting is hands down your best option. It's also quick and convenient. Buying a house is a lot more involved than renting, and you are responsible to maintain it and keep it in good repair. But on the flip side, that also means you can update it or remodel it to your personal preferences. And owning a home has financial benefits. Instead of paying rent, which is just gone after you paid it, paying down a mortgage is building equity every month as you're chipping away on the principal amount. As a quick rule of thumb, about 3% per year on average. And that increases your net worth every year. So in a way, it's like a forced savings account. As an owner, you also benefit from certain tax incentives that would otherwise fall to the landlord. Statistics show that homeowners have on average a much higher net worth than renters. And while owners enjoy these benefits, no matter what the housing market is doing, currently they also benefit from increasing home values. If you would have, for example, bought a house in Milwaukee at the beginning of last year, you would have seen its value go up by about $33,000 on average. And until we're starting to build more homes, we are likely to see this trend to continue. This is a topic that I cover in detail in my monthly market update. So if you want to stay informed about the Milwaukee housing market, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Millennials have largely realized these benefits of home ownership over the last years. This is why they have changed from being mostly tenants and they have become the largest group of home buyers that we have in the market, which is one of the reasons for the ongoing housing shortage that we see. So there is a lot to consider. And if you're not sure if buying makes financial sense for you, let's take a look at the math. All right, let's crunch some numbers. So the question on hand is, strictly financially speaking, is it better to rent or to buy? And I found this fantastic calculator, which is online. The New York Times has it. And I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can pull it up and play around with it. And the cool thing here is that it does the math for you. So all you have to do is put in a home price. I have here $250,000, which is kind of an average three bedroom, two bath in Milwaukee. And then I have here a length of one year. And what you can see, it calculates if you can rent a similar home for less than $2,300, then renting is better. And a home of this size will typically rent for, let's say, $1,600 to $1,800. So renting is definitely the better choice here. But let's see what happens when I move this over here and when we say two years. So now we're dropping down to $1,263. So with the rent being at 16 to $1,800, now actually buying starts to make sense. And if you move it a little bit further here to three years, now we're dropping down to $905, and it definitely makes more sense financially speaking to buy. You have the breakdown here of the numbers. And the nice thing about this calculator, it is incredibly uh, customizable. So you can put in here interest rates, inflation, expected rent growth, in expected home price growth. So you can put all that in. But the most important thing, the numbers don't change that much. The most important thing is the duration 
in the home price. Now, let's see what's going to happen if I put in here, let's say half a million dollars. So that would be a really nice home in the suburbs, good school district for your family. So now we have a situation here where it says if you can rent a similar home for less than $4,567, then renting is better. And I would say that is about where you're at. So for $4,500, you should be able to rent a big home in Milwaukee. But again, as soon as you move it over to two years, it drops down to $2,400 and there's just absolutely no way you can rent a big house for $2,400. So this is a great calculator to play around with, to get comfortable with, to test your assumptions and make an informed decision just strictly based on math. Next question, where can you go online to find places for rent? So there's a number of websites. I'm just going to go with one of the bigger ones, which is Zillow. It has tools to buy and to rent. And I'm here on the rent page. So you can see here the map of Milwaukee with all the rental properties. And we can see some examples with some actual rents here. So here, for example, we have a two bedroom, one bath apartment with 750 square feet for 825 bucks. On the other hand, um, here's something very nice looking. You have to be careful here with uh, the little plus sign because that means that is the smallest unit that they're offering. This is the 777, one of the nicest apartment buildings that we have in the downtown area. And you can see here that rent that they're advertising, that is just for the studio. So if you go down to a two bedroom, two bath, or here we have a three bedroom, three bath, you can see that rents are going up quite a bit actually. Let's say you found an apartment that you really like, but you're not familiar with the area and you want to make sure you're in a safe neighborhood. Then a really handy website is trulia.com. They have all sorts of different maps and you can pull up here a crime map. Let me do that real quick. So what this does, it shows you in the blue shaded areas, different types of crimes that have been reported. So we had some theft here, some shoplifting, a vehicle was stolen. And what I would recommend to do if you are not from Milwaukee is bring up a truly a crime map for your hometown because that will give you some context and help you to better interpret the data that you are seeing here. So trulia.com is a really good website to do some research on neighborhoods. So these were some handy tools, whether you live in Milwaukee or not yet, which brings me to the next topic, which is relocating to Milwaukee. And before we get to it, let me share my personal story. When I relocated to Milwaukee about 15 years ago, I did what almost everybody else does who moves into a new city. And I rented actually here in Brookfield in this development. I stayed here for a year. Would I do it again? Probably not. Because what happened is after living here for a year, I started to know my little neighborhood here in Brookfield a little bit. I knew my commute to work and I have seen a few other spots in the Milwaukee area, but I still didn't know where I wanted to live. And the problem was I had nobody guiding me. So this is the reason why I'm making all these videos and you can watch different videos about neighborhoods in the Milwaukee area on my YouTube channel. And we actually have a little bit of a process to help people moving here. And it's a process of elimination. And let me quickly explain how that works. So basically it's a three-step process. The first filter is that we look at your budget and depending on what your budget is, we can eliminate a lot of the neighborhoods here in Milwaukee because they will be priced either too low or too high. So that rules out a lot of neighborhoods and municipalities here in the area. The second step is that I'll ask you a little bit about your lifestyle. Do you live urban or suburban? Is nightlife important to you? Is school district uh, an issue for you? Those sorts of things that rules out usually a lot of the neighborhoods as well. And then the third filter that we can apply is which part of town do you live? Which part of town are you working? Milwaukee is usually pretty easy to get around. It's called a 20 minute city because you can get anywhere in 20 minutes. But sometimes it doesn't make any sense if you're working on the south side of the city that you're living on the north side of the city and the other way around. So with that we can usually narrow it down to only two or three neighborhoods and from there on it's usually relatively easy to find a good spot for you. 
So what are some other tips when relocating to Milwaukee? Renting an apartment or a house for the first year is certainly a good option. And a lot of people do that, including me 15 years ago, but that is often not ideal. As a rule of thumb, it is much easier and much less expensive to rent when it's just you and you have a smaller household compared to a full grown family with kids and a dog. So what can you expect from us? My team and I work with relocation clients basically every day. We usually kick it off with a brief Zoom call and we discuss your real estate goals, your timeline, your lifestyle preferences, which neighborhoods may be worth considering, what's the process step by step, and we want to make sure that we answer any and all questions that you might have. Here's a few tips for you. Most people reach out to me after they have visited Milwaukee on their own. Let us help you make the best use of your time here and reach out to me before. We will set up a neighborhood tour. If you're ready, we can also look at some houses just for education. If you're considering temporary housing, you have different options. Short-term rents are normally very expensive and hotels can give you cabin fever after a few weeks. A really good solution for short-term housing is actually Airbnb, which has also monthly rates. And because Airbnb comes fully furnished and operational, all you need to bring is a change of clothes. When it comes to seeing listings in this super fast moving market, we do virtual showings on a regular basis that works actually really well when you're physically not here. And this way we can get you into the best listings before they're gone. You can also rely on us for other resources you may need. We have a whole support network of trusted vendors you can use. We know the best local lenders, good home inspectors, all kinds of contractors, other service providers. So just let us know what you need. We've got you covered. In order to schedule a Zoom call with me, just go on my website onpointrg.com and schedule it there directly on my calendar at a time that works for you. You can also download our free relocation guide there and sign up for free MLS access so you can start looking at listings directly on the MLS. I hope that gives you a quick overview about how we work with clients who are relocating to Milwaukee. If you have a quick question, you can also drop it here in the comment section below. I'm always happy to hear from you directly and usually try to respond personally within a day or two here on YouTube. That's all I had for you today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one.